Getting this transfer has allowed me to get off of dialysis, spend more time with my family, and just focus on the things that truly matter. But it did consume my life with lots of doctor's appointments and lots of medications to take. People who receive a transplant, like myself, may develop complications after the surgery. It is important that we take care of ourselves and our brand new kidney just to remain healthy. For today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the kidney transplant aftercare. Everybody wants to know, what is it like to have a kidney transplant? Well, I'm gonna tell you guys today. So if you guys know anyone that can benefit from these types of videos, please go ahead and share it with them. And if you're new to my channel, what's up? Take a moment and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. And if you've done that, welcome to the family. All right guys, let's go ahead and get started. surgery you're taken into a room some people intensive care but for myself I was taken into a room where I had my own nurse obviously they rotate but I had a nurse assigned to me to take care of me the nurse's job was to monitor me and to make sure everything was all right I wasn't allowed to get out of bed right away not without the doctor's approval at that time they just had me lay down in the bed that's why they had to place a catheter inside of me so I didn't have to get up and go pee so my nurse actually removed my bandage she just wanted to make sure that the incision was okay uh, I wasn't bleeding there's no complications so she really monitored me very closely she was in my room and I had like another provider that came through the room quite a few times throughout the night the first night I was so drowsy I was on pain medication so I didn't really do much but the next day they wanted me to get up and start walking I thought it was impossible I didn't think I can do it I cried and complained about it but I had to because movements help prevent blood clots I definitely didn't want any blood clots to happen even though they did give me a shot to help prevent any blood clotting but I just you know slowly got up someone helped me actually the first person to help me was my mom she held my hand and we just took little baby steps that you guys can see if you revert back to my um, kidney vlog video. It will show you all of that in full detail. They just wanted me to take it slowly. They weren't asking me to go through a marathon. They didn't want me to get, you know, too dizzy, fall out. So just take a couple of steps. I first started in my bedroom and I used to walk around my bedroom. Then I proceeded to go down the hall to my brother's room to visit him. He was up and running in no time. I mean, probably almost the same day. Like, he was doing more than I was doing. Also, I had to do a lot of deep breathing. We actually had a little machine that I would breathe in and blow into that helped expand the lungs so there was no infections to develop. I had to repeat this about 10 times within the hour. So the nurse was the one to actually give me my medications at a timely manner, whatever time that the doctor wanted me to take it. Say it's twice a day, she was at my room on time every single night. Um, I didn't have to bring in any of my old medications. I left everything at home. Um, they provided everything right there for me. They gave me my prednisone. They gave me my cell steps. They gave me everything that I needed to take was right there and administered to me as needed. Every day, about twice a day, they would actually draw blood after the transplant. They just wanted to make sure what my levels were to see if there's any improvement. They had to watch me closely. Only do I have lupus, so I'm anemic. You know, I have a lot of other issues going on, so they just wanted to make sure that, you know, all my numbers were going in the right direction, and it was. My creatinine actually dropped. Thank God, it actually dropped. It went to a normal creatinine. It wasn't high anymore. The anemia test said I was fine, which was great, because for a long time, even throughout my pregnancy, I was battling anemia. Overall, I did multiple urine tests, and that's just for them to see and track where the kidney is at before they sent me home. So let's talk about once you leave the hospital. Once you leave the hospital, it is your responsibility to get to every single appointment. And I mean every appointment. They're not playing around. They actually scheduled me two appointments for the first couple of weeks. So I don't live close to my hospital. It was about an hour drive, maybe even longer on some days with traffic. I never got to choose the time where I wanted to come in. Everything was just handed to me and told me to be here at this time. So a tip that I can tell you is before your appointments, make sure that you write down your questions. In the beginning, I kept telling myself in my head, okay, this is what I'm gonna talk about, and then completely forget. So I end up getting a notebook and I write down all my questions that I have for my doctor. So when he came in, I pull out my little notebook and I'd be like, okay, so the first question I have is, second question I have is, and just go down the list and have him answer them. Sometimes when the doctor comes in the room and you talk about other things, your mind's still foggy and you forget things. So it's very important that you guys write down whatever questions that you may have for him or her. 
So even after the kidney transplant, they're still gonna be testing you. So every time that I came to the clinic, I would go and get blood work done and I'll also have to pee in a cup. So once I do that, they'll rush that off to the labs. So by the time I see the doctor, which is about an hour or two after the blood work, he would already have the results and we'll have something to discuss. So a medication that I'm on is called Prograf. So anytime that I had to come into the clinic to get my blood work done, I cannot take Prograf because they need to check my levels and they need to make sure that I don't have it in my system right then and there to screw the testing. So I would make sure that I won't take the Prograf about 12 hours before the test. And then after I take the test and I'll you know, bring my medication with me to the doctor's appointments, pop that, drink my water and go about my business. Doctors didn't want my kids at the hospital with us. They knew that we were here by ourselves. So we had to fly in my mom first and then we flew in my husband's mom as well to help us. Really, we just needed help watching the little one. My older one was going to school every day, and so with the baby, he needed to be home, somebody to watch him, feed him, bathe him, do all of that while we were traveling back and forth to the doctor's appointments. And the doctor's appointments were long. You're in a room full of other patients waiting. Sometimes there were days that I waited maybe two hours before I could even get my blood drawn, and then I have to wait another hour before I can even see the doctor. And like I said, I lived about an hour away from the hospital, maybe a little bit further. A lot of time. It was very time consuming process. So your medications are going to fluctuate depending on your numbers when your numbers come back. So there was many times that with my Prograf medication, it was up and down. It's, that is probably the main medication that would be adjusted. So if your numbers drop too low, they're going to tell you to increase. If it goes too high, they're going to tell you to decrease. Since my transplant, I've had to change my numbers three times so far. And the only reason we had to increase my last one is because we are now in a pandemic and I can't get to the hospital to do my Bella infusion. So because I can't do that, they just made me go up on the Prograf. So I'm assuming that once I'm able to get back in the hospital to do my Bella infusion that you know we'll adjust back to the regular dosage at that time. So there is a fluctuation with your medicine, so be prepared for one day they tell you to take this much and then the next day they tell you to take that much, but just know that I told you things were gonna change. So let's talk about how to take a shower when you get home. When you get home, you gotta be really careful because that whole side is stitched up. They just want you to take a cloth and gently rub the area. Don't be scrubbing and doing all that stuff to irritate it. You just had major surgery. They literally cut your body. So they just want you to be a little bit gentle. But you can take a shower. Just be light on that area and pat dry. When it comes to eating and drinking, this is probably my favorite part because I was able to go back to my old foods. I no longer needed to be on a renal diet. I did have to make a healthy conscious effort in the foods that I put in my body. So they wanted me to eat a lot of vegetables, protein, you know, the basic stuff. So I did that. It was just nice to go back to the regular foods that I wasn't allowed to eat all the time. But when it comes to the water, oh, you guys know I made a video, I'm gonna pop it right here for you, about water intake. We are supposed to be drinking tons and tons of water. So the minimum I believe they wanted us to drink is 64 ounces of water. If you're having a problem with water, you might as well fix it and get used to it because that's all that you're gonna be drinking. You're gonna be chugging, chugging, chugging down that water. I mean, water is healthy for us and we need those kidneys. So at the end of the day, you're gonna do what you have to do to keep those kidneys alive. As much as I hate drinking water, I have to chug it down. There's sometimes I will lay on my counter like a whole lineup of water and just put on my timer in my phone and say, okay, it's one o'clock, I need a drink. Oh, it's three o'clock, I need to drink. So I put myself on a little timer, figure it out, but I get my water intake on a daily basis. I was so used to not having salt that I didn't even put it in my food, but I had lost so much weight and I was trying to gain weight after the process and my doctor was like, well, you know, you could put a little bit of salt in your food. I'm like, Okay, so I don't even really cook with a lot of salt anymore. I love Mrs. Dash. It's great seasoning without the salt, so I do use that, but I just, I eat normal, just like a normal person, regular diet with no issues. The biggest thing that I could say, which I'm guilty of, is resting. I didn't really rest as much. In the beginning, I did. And after I started feeling a little better, I was like, okay, let me move and shake and do what I wanna do. But it's important that we take that time to heal. It's a major surgery and it takes time to recover. So if you're not feeling good, lay down, relax. You're entitled to that. So slowly get back into certain activities. Don't rush back into everything. You're not going outside playing basketball, playing tennis. You're not doing any of that up front right now, at least for the first couple of months. So rest when you can, don't be like me, you know, but slowly get back into things. 
So part of the kidney transplant aftercare is just to implement a few changes in your life. The first thing is do not drink alcohol. It can interfere with your medications. We have come too far to get a new kidney for us to spoil it over a drink. It's not worth it. And if you are battling, I definitely would say get with your coordinator or your doctor and just let them know so they can get you the proper help. So the second lifestyle change is exercise. Exercise makes your heart stronger, keeps your blood pressure low, and it just keeps us healthy. Begin to exercise slowly. Don't go out there, you know, pumping a whole bunch of weights. Start with walking on an everyday basis and talk to your doctor and let them tell you when it's okay for you to actually go back to the gym or you can actually start doing crunches. I know for me, he didn't want me to do anything but walking for the first three months. The next thing is to keep a healthy weight. You guys saw I lost a lot of weight, but you know, there are a lot of people that get on the medications and they start to plump up. And it's because of, you know, medications like prednisone. It's not your fault, it's the medications. But we gotta be careful about what we put into our body. Putting the right things in our body because we don't wanna develop any, you know, heart diseases or any other issues. We already lost the kidney, so we're trying to keep all the other organs preserved. And the biggest one of them all is quit smoking guys you cannot afford to have lung cancer guys let me take you back to kindergarten when they told you it can harm your heart your lungs and even your brand new kidney so do yourself a favor and quit smoking and if you're having any issues seek medical attention there's somebody out there that is willing to help you and to be honest you shouldn't be smoking because if you went through the whole transplant process they would have made you stop beforehand so please don't fall back into your bad habit if you are an ex-smoker so those were my tips today about the kidney transplant aftercare. You know, just take care of you, make yourself feel good. For me, I like to get dressed up, put on my makeup, and I feel better. I know that I'm battling a lot mentally. I don't feel as pretty as I used to feel, but I do things to make me feel better about myself. And you can do it too. Do things that you like to do. This is your time. Take some self-care. There's nothing like self-care. You need to go get a massage done, get your toes done, get your hair cut, whatever it is. But do whatever you need to do to put a smile on your face because the success of a kidney transplant aftercare is all on you. All right, guys, before we leave today, I'm gonna leave you with a little quote. And today's quote is, there's only one happiness in this life, to love and be loved. All right, guys, so make sure you take time to love on yourself and love on everyone else around you. Thank you guys for watching this video today. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. And I just wanna let you know that I love and appreciate you. All right, guys, see you in the next video. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the Trini, 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 Lord Jesus, why? So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about what it's like no, not Jesus. Get it together, Crystal. So let's. So, so, so. Talking too much today. <sighs> Trying to do too much in one day.